the honor of uh, introducing Mayor Hepner. For more than 30 years, Linda Hepner has called Surrey her home. She has watched it grow from a rural suburb to the flourishing and thriving center as we know it today. Now as mayor of British Columbia's fastest growing city, Mayor Hepner continues to shape the growth and the new opportunities for Surrey. The city continues to grow in leaps and bounds. More than 1,000 people move to Surrey each month. You hear, you've heard that statistic very often. Uh, it's true, uh, we keep repeating it because it is so important to uh, reflect on that as we uh, consider planning for growing the city. And I'm sure uh, Mayor Hepner will tell us something about that. Uh, and this means that in the not too distant future, Surrey's population will exceed that of Vancouver. And I can tell you that people from Vancouver are very cognizant of that fact. No question, Mayor Hepner will be working hard on balancing sustainable growth while maintaining Surrey as a destination for families and businesses, and doing all that with an eye for creating abundant social, cultural, and economic opportunities for all who live and work and play in our beautiful city. Ladies and gentlemen, in our first State of the City address, please join me in welcoming Mayor Hepner. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And for those of you who actually are here for the Cameroon Soccer Club uh, with FIFA, their luncheon is upstairs. <laughs> well, good afternoon. It's been 168 days since I was sworn in as your mayor, and the annual State of the ad ad City address is my chance to get caught up with you. But it has to be more than just a running commentary on what we've accomplished together as a community. More importantly, it's an opportunity to highlight what still needs to be done and what the next 12 months and perhaps the next 12 years is going to look like. Before I begin, I want to recognize a few people starting with my council colleagues. I learned a long time ago that it takes a great team to get great things done, and I am particularly blessed to have a group of councillors who take teamwork seriously. Councillor Tom Gill. <laughs> Councillor Bruce Hain. <laughs> Councillor Vera LaFranc. <laughs> Councillor Mary Martin. Councillor Mike Starchuk. <laughs> Councillor Barbara Steele. <laughs> Councillor Judy Villeneuve. <laughs> and Councillor Dave Woods. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge some others in the audience here today. First of all, former Mayor Diane Watts is here. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Ziv Ofect is here, and Ziv is the founder and CEO of the Center for Digital Innovation in Beersheba, Israel. <laughs> Ziv, welcome. <laughs> Candace Quinter joins me, and Candace uh, is a board member of the Center of Israel and Jewish Affairs. Darren Makoff is here. Darren is the director of the Pacific Region for the Center of Israel and Jewish Affairs. I just want to stop here and say a couple of other things because Darren was instrumental as being the linchpin in organizing my recent Israel mission. And as I speak to you today, you will know that there are some exciting things happening as a re result of that and a whole lot of that goes to Darren's uh, uh, organizational skills. Wally, Wally Bruno is also here today, Vice President of Football Operations. <laughs> He's a great Surrey citizen and I'm happy to see him join us. My family also joins me here today and I just want to say that no one, 
can do this job without the solid backing and grounding at home. So thank you for that. It really is a big deal, that support. And finally, I want to thank our city staff who led by, led by city manager Vince Lalonde for everything they do to make our city work each and every day. And f that includes putting the presentation together here today that you'll see on, the, see on the screen. When you are fortunate, When you are fortunate enough to have a strong team on council and a dedicated and professional team on city staff, there really isn't anything that you can't accomplish. And just before I get into the actual state of our city, I want to share a few interesting pieces of information about the world we live in today. At first glance, you might wonder what they have to do with Surrey or our city's future. But trust me, they do. Because if I've learned anything over the years, it's that no city or community lives in isolation. We're all part of a bigger, integrated picture, and what happens on the other side of the world really does have an impact on us who live and work here. And I'm hoping that by the end of my presentation, you'll understand why these handful of seemingly disconnected pieces of information are important to all of us particularly when it comes to how our city sees itself and how our neighbors and the rest of the world sees us. The world's demographics are changing and changing rapidly, dramatically changing. For instance, more babies will be born this year in Nigeria than in all of Europe combined. By 2050, the world's population of people aged 65 and older will double making it the first time in the history of the world that there will be more people over 65 than under 14. Next, that washing machine in your laundry room has more built-in computer power and technology than the Apollo 11 spacecraft that landed on the moon in July of 1969. By 2030, just 30, 15 years from now, 2.2 billion more people will be added to the world's middle class. The vast majority of them will live in Asia. In 1935, the lifespan of a company on the Standard and Poor's Index was 90 years. Today, the lifespan of an average company, just 18 years. By 2030, global agricultural production will have to grow by 38% to feed the world. That same agricultural production will need to grow by a further 60% by 2050, just to keep up with the demand for food products, particularly from all those new middle class consumers. Meanwhile, on December the 1st, 2014, just last year, Americans spent a record 2.65 billion online in a single day. But a few weeks earlier on the other side of the world, there was an even more significant online shopping record. It was November 11, Singles Day in China. Singles Day is a contrived shopping holiday organized by single students in the 90s as a protest against Valentine's Day. So cover your ears to all you lovers out there because it has grown to become a national event of epic proportion. And on November 11 last year, Alibaba, Chinese biggest e-retailer, the Chinese version of Amazon, recorded more than $9 billion of sales in a single day. It was a world record. And finally, on September 24 last year, a team of space scientists and rocket engineers were celebrating at a mission control center. Now, there's nothing new about that. We've seen those kinds of scenes dozens of times. But this time, the celebration wasn't in some mission control center in the United States or in Russia or in Europe. It was in southern India. You see, the Indian Space Research Organization was celebrating its successful placement of a spacecraft into orbit around Mars. Prime Minister Modi explained the whole effort had cost $74 million. 
That's less than what Hollywood spent to make the award-winning science fiction film Gravity. And for the record, India was the first country to put a spacecraft into orbit around Mars on its first attempt. So what could babies in Nigeria, rockets from India, online sales in China, a worldwide boom in seniors, and washing machines with more built-in technology than rockets have to do with us? What could they possibly have to do with Surrey? Well, the answer is simple, everything. It's the world we live in. It's the world we play in. It's the world we work in. And it's the world our children and our grandchildren are growing up in. Now let me see if I can knit those different pieces and stories together in a way that reinforces the state of our city and its priorities over the next 12 months and frankly even longer. Being able to take a long view is something that's not only good for legendary investors like Warren Buffett, it's also good for cities like ours, cities with a vision of where they want to go in the years ahead. You see, while all of us in our own lives make decisions every single day, immediate decisions, as a city, we have to be not mindful that we need to make decisions that are going to shape us and shape our city in the future. And just to reinforce the virtue of vision and having a long-term view and sticking to it over the long run. You know it took Coca-Cola 10 years to break even in China and it took Walmart 11 years to do the same thing. Do you think that either of those companies regret their investment of time and money in that incredible market? Not on your life. And it's how I feel about our city. The investments we make today in both time and in money are paying off. Let me put it another way. In 2010, our region welcomed the world to the most successful winter games ever. We all learned the Olympic motto and creed, Citius, Altius, Fortius. Faster, higher, stronger. Without putting too fine a point on it, that's Surrey. Moving faster, reaching higher, getting stronger. Most of you live here, but for the handful of you that are only visiting, here is a quick Surrey summary. We're a diverse community that speaks 102 different languages a young community with a third of our population under 19. And to put that into perspective, we have more young people than the entire population of Delta. And the city of Surrey has been named one of Canada's top employers for young people in 2015. We're a growing community, as you heard, from of 1,000 people every single month. And geographically, we are big, really big, 315 square kilometers making us bigger than Vancouver, Richmond, and Burnaby combined. That also means, as Shane was telling us, that we have the room to grow. And for any city, that's an important part of the future. That ability to grow allows us the luxury of being able to design our future. We've been voted the best place to invest four years in a row in BC. We're a city committed to biodiversity strategy. We're protecting 10,000 acres of natural space right across this city. That's equal in size to 10 Stanley Parks. We're a city that's already diverted 70% of its organic waste away from landfills, and we're going to do more. We're a city that will have 100,000 seniors by 2021. So you can see why we take an interest in the world's changing demographics. We're a city that sp supports more than 120 arts, heritage, and cultural groups across the community because we know that a lot of different factors determine a city's character, including its passion for creativity and the arts. We're a city with a solid balance sheet and the lowest taxes in the region. That's all amazing, but what does the next chapter look like? First. It's a chapter we're going to write together. Great cities are forged by the hands of great citizens. And it's a chapter that will set new benchmarks when it comes to economic development, our environment, public transit, and our willingness and capacity to deal with social issues and challenges that come with a growing community. And I want to start that new chapter by dealing head on with the issue of public safety. In a lot of ways, it's one of those elephants in the room. 
There's no question that the headlines over the past few weeks had captured everyone's attention. No community is immune to crime, and we saw that just on the news this morning. What we've seen in the region, however, has made us question our safety. And while I could trot out statistics and graphs and charts that demonstrate that we are legitimately a safe, big city, the simple fact is that if you don't feel safe, all the statistics in the world aren't going to matter. During the election campaign last year, I made a point of emphasizing how important it was to get new officers on the ground. In 2005, we had nearly 500 officers in Surrey. Today, we have close to 700. And in the next 10 months, or 12 months, I want them sooner, uh, we will have over 800. And just yesterday, the federal government approved that unprecedented request for those 100 officers. That's just one piece of a strategy. We're doing more. We're creating a neighborhood policing model that builds strong working relationships in communities. And you've seen the start of that effort with the public forums being held by the RCMP and our city departments in each community. We're in the process of hiring a director of public safety strategies who will be responsible for better integrating the work and programs of our RCMP, fire services, bylaws, and other city departments, as well as outside agencies. That's going to enable us to develop the next iteration of our public safety strategy. We're already working with the provincial government on significant improvements to the justice precinct, including pulling the police, the justice system, elements of the health and social services all into that precinct, making us better able to immediately deal with those that are making poor life choices and find themselves before the courts. To that end, we have successfully secured from the province more than 24 million in improvements in courtroom expansion, additional prosecutors, and a complement of integrated services to better serve youth and deal with cases of domestic violence. It's the most significant increase in construction and resources that we've seen, and it's exactly how we envisioned our former city hall might be utilized by the community. There's another big elephant in the room these days, and it is a big one. It's not just an issue for those of us here in Surrey, it's on the minds of people right across the region. We're in the final stage of that transit funding vote, and for Surrey, it is an important decision. The plan is more pronounced here than perhaps anywhere in the region. 45% of the projects are, will be right here in Surrey where the need is the greatest. And just nine days left to get your ballot into Elections BC, I want to encourage everyone in our city to vote and to vote yes. It's not too late, but you really do need to take it off the kitchen table and get it completed and sent in this week. Transportation is critical to shaping our city and to our economic potential. And when I look at our economic and job creating prospects, I am astonished by the opportunities in front of us. Our light rail project alone will create some 24,000 construction jobs. And since 8% of Surrey's workforce is engaged in construction, it is a huge economic boost. An estimated 2,000 new businesses are expected to open in Surrey this year alone. And one of the best examples of business success has been our Innovation Boulevard. It started with three founding partners, the City of Surrey, Simon Fraser University, and the Fraser Health Authority. That partnership has already extended across the region, the province, the country, and literally around the globe. Its rapid success has been staggering. In fact, the first Innovation Boulevard-grown technology has already been commercialized. Conquer Mobile's surgery simulation program moved from idea to product in less than one year, virtually unheard of. And that ability to jumpstart the commercialized pr commercialization process is gold for any technology development company, and word is spreading fast. Innovation Boulevard had early, early success in funding, including $36 million from the federal Age Well program. And just yesterday, the Government of Canada announced $3.6 million towards establishing the Image Tech Lab, a world-class medical imaging centre located at Surrey Memorial Hospital. 
The Image Tech Lab will bring together the region's top health innovators, and Dr. Darcy is here today, one of those top health innovators, with the most powerful MRI technology to advance treatment for devastating brain disorders and diseases. The combined imaging capacity, medical imaging capacity, will be the very first in Western Canada. And so much has been achieved in two short years. We are only just beginning to realize the potential of Innovation Boulevard. So we'll continue to drive forward and build on its young but strong foundation. And we will leverage our global partnerships with Israel, with India, the United States, France, and Ireland to give Innovation Boulevard the scope and the depth that will guarantee long-term success. Now we're working to broaden that success with the successes in clean tech, agri-innovation, and social innovation. Clean tech is one of Canada's fastest growing sectors, and Surrey is well positioned to lead. We've recently recruited to Newton the Foresight Clean Tech, or clean tech Accelerator Center. It's Western Canada's only accelerator for clean technologies. And last month, the Government of Canada announced a two million funding to Foresight to help clean up Canada's resource industry. And as Surrey's clean tech sector grows across the city, Newton is fast becoming the hotbed of this innovation. Newton is home to a growing roster of clean tech assets, including PowerTech Labs, SFU's Fuel Cell Research Lab, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, Foresight, and clean tech companies. In true Surrey style, we are going to lace together and focus those assets on establishing the Newton Industrial Area as an international hub for clean tech innovation, demonstration, and commercialization. This initiative will be called Eco Newton. Today, over 10% of BC's clean tech companies are already located here in Surrey. And our aim is to grow that number considerably over the years ahead. In fact, recruitment is underway for a chair in clean technologies at SFU. This position will play a leadership role in helping us meet our clean tech goals. That's how serious we are about growing this sector and the good paying jobs that come with it. And it doesn't stop with clean tech. As evident in California's ongoing drought situation, Climate change risks have profound effects on global food security. With one-third of Surrey's land being in the agricultural land reserve, we can be part of the solution. We understand that innovation in the ag sector is what will increase global food security. We also understand the need to work with and to support the farming industry to maximize the utilization and productivity of our precious ag land and to help develop the farmers of the future. So we're doing something about it. In partnership with the BC Agriculture Center of Excellence, with KPU, with SFU, and with BCIT, Surrey will become a living laboratory for agri-innovation to enable innovators to develop game-changing agri-solutions. One such initiative is the Biopod Project. We're working with the BC Ag Center of Excellence and the John Volkin Academy, a drug recovery center for youth to create a place where agri-technologies can be tested, refined, and demonstrated. The Biopod will also act as a skills training facility to engage John Vulcan Academy students in horticultural training and being part of that global food security solution. We will also create a virtual incubator farm to serve as a robust portal for aspiring farmers to learn, find support, get connected with mentors and funding resources. And most importantly, it will identify Surrey land upon which they can farm. This is another example of where Surrey will be a change champion. Following on the heels of my Israel mission, a new initiative, cyber security, is of keen interest to us. A generation ago, we never heard of cyber security. When it all started, we figured the internet was a safe and friendly place. Today, we know differently. Today, cyber threats are real, are dangerous, and are costly. There isn't a company or a government or an individual who doesn't appreciate the kind of threat and damage that comes with a breakdown in cyber security. 
It's why we're working with SFU and with Israel's Ben-Gurion University, as well as the top companies here and abroad, to better understand and to address not only our vulnerabilities, but those of cities everywhere. It is also an international and a business opportunity for us. It's why I want to see that same explosion of success that we have seen in Innovation Boulevard to expand to cybersecurity startups. Ultimately, I'd like to see the world's cities looking to Surrey and our cybersecurity companies for solutions to global cyber threats. And we are developing an economic strategy to advance that very opportunity. Many around the table here today will uh, be participating in that strategy. Our city was named one of the top seven intelligent communities of 2015 by the Intelligent Community Forum based out of New York. Surrey joined six other cities from the United States, Brazil, Taiwan, and Australia who also made it to that top seven. The fact that we are the only Canadian city and had to beat out more than 300 other nominations from around the world to get into the final seven speaks volumes about how our city is seen through the eyes of the international community. And on June 11, one of those final seven cities will take the title. Which brings me to the importance of a city's brand. And building on the success of previous years, the seventh Surrey Economic Summit will take place in October. This year's summit will bring together some of the world's best branded cities, as well as CEOs from industry sectors that are going to play an important part in this city's future, Emma, as I'm defining it here today. And while we're encouraging businesses and investors to look at Surrey, we also know that we need to continue to make investments in our city's infrastructure and our quality of life amenities. Next week, pardon me, next week we open the, Guilford, the new Guilford Aquatic Centre, a new Grandview Pool later this year. We're developing the East Clayton Rec Centre, building phase two of the Surrey Museum, adding a new soccer center of excellence, constructing a new neighborhood park in Grandview, building a contemporary art space and gallery in South Surrey, and adding more ice in Cloverdale, working with the YMCA to create another community center. And we're going to relocate the North Surrey Rec Center and Ice Arena to King George Boulevard and 128th. We will also be going to the market for expressions of interest to build a multi-purpose sport and entertainment complex and stadium in South Westminster to kickstart the revitalization of that area. At the same time, our plans for a cultural corridor stretching from city center along King George Boulevard will create a hub for culture and art facilities and a close quarter relationship with business. That's all aimed at moving the arts and culture community from a niche entertainment sector to a vibrant job creator. These public facilities shine a light on our character as a city, and together they tell families that they've made the right choice in deciding to move here. But equally important, these public amenities and public spaces tell potential investors and job creators looking to locate here that we do put a premium on quality of life. As a city, we must also extend our commitment to social, community, and environmental innovation. It's one reason why our first Social Innovation Summit will be held this November. I'm going to call this the Year of the Summits. The Social Innovation Summit is an opportunity to change how we see and we deal with issues such as poverty, homelessness, and challenges facing our most vulnerable citizens by looking at solutions through the lens of innovation. Our recent partnership with John Vulcan Foundation to create a chair in mental health and addictions at SFU is an indication of our commitment to show leadership solutions. That kind of thinking also extends to the growing number of seniors in our community. As we work towards becoming Canada's most age-friendly city by 2018, we are going to appoint a seniors advocate at City Hall. We want to make sure that seniors' issues, needs, and perspectives are as front and center in our decision making as our youth. Now, turning briefly to the environment, 
When it's completed in 2017, our biofuel facility will be the first closed loop system in all of North America, collecting the organic waste, processing it, processing it into alternative fuels for the trucks that pick up the waste and for the rest of the city fleet, while reducing CO2 emissions by 40,000 tons each and every year. That's the equivalent of taking 8,500 cars off the road every year. Also, we are about to undertake the most aggressive tree planting in our city's history. Over the past 30 years, we have planted about 2,500 trees a year. And over the next four, we will be doubling that to 5,000 trees per year. I, I really want to focus on this because it's really important in environmentally to demonstrate that we are balancing um, the environment with the kind of growth that we expect to see here in the city. And I think that's, uh, that's really critical in our decision making. So in wrapping up, ladies and gentlemen, it's also important to point out that criti critical to everything I've talked about today is a city hall that works and works well. It starts with the right management and leadership team, and in Surrey, our senior staff are the best in the business. They have the talent and the drive that's needed to implement the priorities set out by mayor and council, and priorities that are critical to the shaping of the next chapter of the Surrey story. That includes continuing to build on our library of over 320 open data sets, making us the most transparent local government in the province. It also includes inc increasing citywide Wi-Fi access from its current 18 locations to more than 45 and completing Innovation Boulevard's fiber network connection to Surrey City Centre and the Surrey Memorial Hospital. It includes utilizing our state-of-the-art intelligent traffic monitoring system to play an important and ever-increasing role in public safety. It includes introducing a Nexus-style development and building permit approval process that guarantees the shortest timelines in the business for projects that meet our basic requirements. Wow, I thought I'd get a clap for that on all the developers in the room. <laughs> and while it may appear to be one of those inside baseball kinds of discussions, we'll be working with the province of British Columbia to secure a Surrey Charter that modernizes our governance and our relationship with Victoria. We'll... we'll <laughs> We'll start by putting together a working group with Victoria to v define what a Surrey Act might look like. And on the face of it, these sort of back of house initiatives and improvements don't always come with a lot of sex appeal. But they are fundamentally vital tools when it comes to running a modern, smart, growing city. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been 168 days. Every day has certainly been different. And while I wish I could say every day was a dream and absolutely perfect in every way, that would be stretching things a little. But I can say that every day has had its highlights and its lessons. And every single day I see opportunities. Some of them are easy, while others require hard work and creativity. But the opportunities are there. And the fact is that every great city is a work in progress. There will never be a final chapter. We're not the Surrey of a generation ago and come the next generation, I hope they'll look back at us and say they've changed our city even further for the better. And as your mayor, I appreciate how much every one of you do for the city. Whether you are an investor, an employer, a community volunteer, or a visitor, your efforts are making Surrey better. And I know how far we've come and how far we can go. We have the imagination and the drive to see what we have going for us. Now we have to work to shape our city into something remarkable. So a year from now, I'll be back as we take another look at the state of our city. It's going to be a busy year. If you can figure out how to make 30 hours into a day, that would be helpful. Uh, 
but I really want to thank you all for being here today and showing your support for the city of Surrey because I know it's a city that we all love. Thank you very much.